Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I am Dr. Gopal Sharan Parashari. Uh, welcome to this course in uh, Evolutionary Game Theory and Applications. I am an assistant professor in Department of HSS at IIT Dharwar. So, we have been doing this course on Evolutionary Game Theory and in the last lecture we went through the replicator dynamics and applied it to uh, the game called Hawk and Dove. So, now we will again proceed further and try to uh, study one application of replicator dynamics in the form of a game where we will see how cooperation is evolved in a population. Okay? So, we will just proceed what we did from what we did in previous lecture. So, basically we saw that this uh, we were studying this replicator dynamics in the realm of natural selection and we saw uh, in the process of natural selection many species uh, what they do they undergo a fierce competition. Okay. As we know this natural selection is meant by uh, survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest and in this process we saw and we know that there is a fierce competition involved. But to our surprise there are many examples of cooperation in this along with this competition in the animal world. There are certain examples like a variety of bats what they do they help their hungry friends by sharing the blood meal with them. Okay. Similarly, we have other examples where uh, organisms or animals they are involved in grooming. Animals are involved in grooming for example, this impalas which are antelope what they do they take turns for performing an upward sweep of the tongue along the neck in order to remove ticks. So, this is how we see examples of cooperation in the animal world. Similarly, another example, example is related to some alarm calling when an animal sees any predator then what they do? They use some mechanism of alarm calling and they let the others know other members of their population let them know about this uh, danger from the predator okay. and also at the same time there is a risk involved for this person who is raising the alarm that this predator may see this, uh, this animal also. So, avoiding this risk itself what they do they are involved in this kind of process where they cooperate with the other uh, members of their population uh, by the process of this alarm calling to, to alert them. Uh, for a predator. Okay. So, this kind of signaling mechanism is practiced by uh, certain species of the monkeys what they do and they are so advanced that they make distinct call for different kind of predators. So, when there is a eagle then the mechanism of signaling is different then when there is a leopard then they use some different mechanism of alarming and for the snakes they use yet another uh, mechanism. Uh, raising an alarm to the uh, fellow uh, population members. Okay. So, that makes sense also because the appropriate mechanism for you know saving themselves from uh, such kind of uh, dangers should be different when the predator is in air for example, eagles or on the ground for example, leopard or in the trees snakes. Okay. So, now, when we see this cooperation as we saw in these previous examples be it grooming or be it alarm calling for some predator, what we see uh, that there exists this kind of cooperation uh, almost entire animal world uh, along with this competition that we talk about in the replicator dynamics or natural selection. So, one challenge for evolutionary biologists is that how they should explain this cooperative behavior within the framework of natural selection. So, for that what we will do we will start uh, our analysis by using 
a game that we studied in the beginning itself that is called prisoner's dilemma. We have already discussed about it in the uh, lectures in the beginning of this course. So, again we will take uh, the example of this prisoner's dilemma only to explain this cooperation in the animal world in the realm of natural selection. So, let us see this how it happens. So, we already know that the story in the prisoner's dilemma I will not repeat that because we have done enough in the previous lectures. So, basically here what happens there are two players or say two prisoners both of them has two options either they can defect or they can cooperate to each other. Similarly, player 2 can defect or cooperate to each other and we have already seen and now also you can see that this uh, defect the strategy defect this strictly dominates cooperate for both the players as you see for player 1 defect is giving 3 cooperate is giving 1 when the other player is playing defect similarly defect is giving 8 and cooperate is giving 5 when other player is playing cooperate. Okay. So, we can see that this defect is strictly defect strictly dominates cooperate okay. and suppose this kind of uh, setting is there in the animal world then we cannot foresee any kind of uh, cooperation in this setting as we can clearly see that defect is always strictly dominating uh, cooperate. So, there is no possibility of uh, cooperation uh, coming into being. Okay. So, we will see how we can uh, model the situation and see how this cooperation emerges in this competition. Okay. So, basically we can also relate this different kind of examples we saw as we saw this example of the grooming in the antelopes or impalas then we can uh, consider that this cooperate meaning means that uh, they groom each other and defect means they do not groom each other. Similarly, in the case of signal calling we can consider cooperate means that they are calling the signal to them to other members of the population and when they are not calling uh, for a signal when they see a predator then it is defect. So, this in this way we can relate this prisoners dilemma uh, game and the strategies therein like defect and cooperate to various situations in other settings also. Okay. So, that is why this is the beauty of this game of the prisoners dilemma that it can be applied to many such settings. Okay. So, now let us see how uh, we can analyze this emergence of cooperation in these settings. Okay. So, basically the key feature for uh, cooperation to happen or cooperation to develop in such kind of settings is that this they the players should repeatedly interact. If they are not uh, interacting repeatedly then cooperation is very difficult. Okay. So, we will see uh, that how this repeated interaction is making uh, the cooperation possible. Also in the previous introductory lectures we have already discussed a bit of these repeated games. So, we will go on the same lines. Okay. So, what we are considering we are assuming that players who are involved in playing this prisoner's dilemma they are not playing prisoner's dilemma for just once. What they are doing they are repeatedly interacting within the framework of this prisoner's, uh, prisoner's dilemma and they are playing it repeatedly. Okay. So, we are assuming uh, that they are not just playing just once they are playing this for 10 times. So, basically we have already discussed like how strategies uh, players choose strategies in, in the sense of repeated games. So, here what they can do they can choose any of the two strategies that is cooperate and defect in any of the periods. So, they are playing for 10 periods. So, we may assume that for example, we can write C for cooperate and D for defect. So, then they can use any combination of C and D for different uh, periods. So, for example, we can say that this given sequence of actions is a strategy for this repeated interactions. So, for example, they play they cooperate a player cooperates in first 7 periods and then chooses D in the last 3 periods or similarly it can be anything. It can be like they can play uh, defect in first 5 period then they can play cooperate in the next 5 periods and so on. So, there is a any sequence is possible in the repeated prisoners dilemma game or any uh, any repeated game for that matter. Okay. Then when we discuss this repeated games then we also discussed that 
there are certain punishment strategies that player can employ okay, to punish a non, uh, non supportive or non cooperative behavior. So, in that uh, time, in that time we saw that one such strategy is called grim trigger strategy. Okay. So, what player does? So, player will, will start playing the game with cooperate. Okay. So, we'll, he will cooperate initially, but then this player sees that the opponent player or the other player has chosen something else that is defect. Then what this player will do? He will defect permanently in the rest of the game. So, basically the player will start with the cooperation, but then if the other player defect, then this player for punishing that player, what it will do? He will always play defect in rest of the game in each period. So, this is why this uh, called grim trigger strategy because it provides for a very severe punishment. Okay. Similarly, an, uh, another strategy for this kind of situation is tit for tat strategy. Okay. So, as the name suggests the what the player will does in this situation in this strategy that he will start playing cooperate, he will choose cooperate in the first period and then in any subsequent period or the future period what he will do? He will choose what the other player has chosen in the previous period. So, for example, this person starts with C okay, and another person also plays C, then in the next period this person plays C, but at some point of time other player plays D. So, then what this person will do? The first player will play D now. Now, suppose this again plays D, then he will again play D, but suppose now it again plays C, he changes from D to C, then this first person will again follow what the other person has done in the previous period. So, that is he will play C. So, this is how this tit for tat happens, tit for tat. But this is not the case in the, the previous strategy that we talk about grim trigger strategy, where what will happen? Suppose a person starts with C, other person starts also with C, then again this person plays C, this person again plays C, but now say some time other person plays D. Then the first person what he will do? This D will trigger him to play D always. So, he will play D, D, D for rest of the game. So, this is your grim trigger strategy, grim trigger this we can call grim trigger strategy. Okay. So, this is the difference between these two strategies. I hope it is clear as we have already discussed these things in the uh, one of the previous lectures. Okay. So, now the thing is are there examples when any such kind of strategies are found in the real world or at least in some experimental setting. So, we will see that there are some examples of the tit for tat strategy in some real world or experimental settings. Okay. So, basically it has been observed that a species called stickleback which is a which is a small fish they use this tit for tat strategies in their in some of the experiment and the real world. So, basically what happens whenever a predator appears as we were talking about the signaling mechanism. So, similar kind of thing is here. So, basically whenever this small fish it sees a predator, okay, then what they will do? One or more than one sticklebacks they will approach this predator to check whether this is uh, dangerous or not. Okay. And we know that this is a risky process. So, what they will do? Then often go in pairs, they will go more than one or pair. Okay. So, this paper in nature, this Milinsky has found that this sticklebacks use tit for tat strategy for this purpose. Okay. So, what they will do? Two sticklebacks, they will swim towards the predator to know whether this is really dangerous or not. Okay. Then we can say that if each both of them are moving forward, then this is cooperation. We can call this cooperation okay, in our terminology of the prisoner's dilemma. And suppose one fish, one of the fishes, uh, fish because uh, they are in pairs. So, if one of them hangs back, then we call this as defection. Okay. 
So, this is how it can fit in our realm of prisoner's dilemma. Okay. So, actually by Milinsky, this experiment was done by a single fish only, single stickle back using mirror. So, he used one mirror, so where this fish was looking at her own image. So, then whenever image was formed in such a manner that it appears that the image is moving forward only, then this also followed by this cooperation that is moving forward and whenever the image was formed like that, that it appears that the image who were uh, that fish was considering to be the second fish. So, when that hangs back, then this was also doing hang back. Okay. So, in this experiment, it was established that these tiny fish, they go for tit for tat kind of uh, strategy. Okay. I hope it is clear. So, what we will do, we will now analyze that how this uh, cooperation will breed or uh, develop in this population. Okay. So, what we will consider that in this process, we will consider a population okay, where all the members of this population, they are endowed with uh, three kind of strategies. So, members of this population, they are what I can say that as uh, we have already used this terminology that they are hard wired. So, all of them, all the members of this population are hard wired with these three strategies. So, we can say that in this population, there is a gene pool where these three strategies are there. That means, all of the members are hard wired with any of these three strategies. So, what are these three strategies? One is there are members who are hard wired to always cooperate. Okay. Then, there are other members who are hard wired to always defect. So, the players or the members of the population who are always cooperating or hard wired to cooperate always, them we are calling cooperators okay. and the ones those are always defecting or hard wired to defect, we are calling them defectors. Okay. So, this is same just like prisoner's dilemma till now, but there is a change here what we are considering that there is third type of members are also there. For them, they are hard wired to play tit for tat strategy okay, instead of cooperating, always cooperating or always defecting. Okay. So, this is these are the three strategies in the gene pool. So, what do you mean by uh, tit for tat? These uh, members of this population who are hard wired for playing tit for tat, what they will do? they will choose cooperate in the beginning of the game that is in the first period and then they will choose okay, what other player has chosen in the previous period as I already told that suppose one person this is player 1 and this is player 2. So, suppose player 1 plays C, player 2 also plays C then say in the next period what is happening? Player 1 is playing C, but player 2 played D then what player 1 will do? player 1 will choose D okay, because player 2 has played D in the previous period. Okay. Now, suppose this player 2 again plays C, now this player 1 will also again play C. So, this kind of situation is called tit for tat as we have already discussed. Okay. So, again I am repeating it that now our population has three types of gene in the uh, population. So, three types of strategies are there that means the members of this population are hard wired to play any of these three strategies. So, one uh, possibility is that few of them are hardwired with the cooperate or always cooperate. So, those we are calling cooperators. The other type of uh, members are there in the population, they are hardwired for always defecting and we are calling them defectors. And the third thing is tit for tat that few of the members of this population are, are hardwired for playing tit for tat strategy that I have already explained. Okay. So, let us proceed further in this uh, direction. So, basically uh, what we are doing? We are considering a pairwise interaction in a population where the members of the population are hard wired to play either of these three strategies. Okay. So, uh, that in other words we can see that two members are drawn randomly to play this game prisoners dilemma kind of game. Okay. Uh, they are randomly drawn and they are matched to play this game and where there are three possibilities 
cooperator, defector and tit for tat. And as we have already discussed in this course that in the realm of evolutionary game theory what happens? Players do not choose the strategy, rather the strategy is hardwired into them. So, as I already told that in this population members are hardwired to play any of these three uh, strategies. Okay. So, we, what we will do next step is to write a strategic form game in this situation. Okay. So, we can do that easily. So, basically we already know that suppose in the case of prisoner's dilemma we already know. So, the strategic form of prisoner's dilemma can be denoted by uh, like this. So, there are two strategies defect and cooperate, defect and cooperate and these were the respective payoffs. Okay. So, when two defectors are interacting, so the each of them getting 3 comma 3. When a defector is interacting with cooperator, then defector is getting 8 and cooperator is getting 1. As we already know, I am again telling that in this payoff ordered pair, the first this first number tells the payoff of player 1 or row player and the second number tells the payoff of the player 2 or the column player. Okay. These things we have already done. Similarly, when a cooperate strategy player interacts with the defector, then cooperator will get 1 and the defector will get, get 8 and when two cooperators when they interact, then each of them get 5 5. So, this was the case with prisoner's dilemma. So, what we will see now that how the strategic form game is different in our next new situation where there is a third strategy also that is tit for tat that is what we are going to see here. Okay. And now another uh, change from our pre previous setting is that now these players are not just interacting once, they are interacting for the 10 times. So, this is repeated prisoner's dilemma. So, repeated means we are considering a 10 period prisoner's dilemma. So, players are playing this prisoner's dilemma for 10 period with one more strategy tit for tat. Okay. So, let us see. So, we can easily see that what will happen when two defectors they are engaged to play this prisoner's dilemma for 10 times. So, if they are playing one time then they are getting 3 3. Okay. So, here as we know that they are hardwired to play defect. So, when they play defect for 10 times then what they will do? They what they will get as payoff? They will get 30 and 30. Okay as in for one instance, one interaction they are getting 3 comma 3 and since they are hardwired to play always defect. So, what will happen? 10 times they will get 3 3. So, it is 30 comma 30. Okay. Similarly, when a defector interacts with a cooperator, so we are here. So, when they interact for 10 times, so then they will get 80 comma 10. Why? Because in a single iteration they are getting 8 comma 1. And since they are hard, hardwired to play, player 1 is hardwired to play defect, player 2 is hardwired to play cooperate. So, when they do it for 10 times, so they are getting 80 comma 10. Okay. Similarly, we can uh, get to these cells in the similar manner. So, when this cooperate interacts with the defect, just, just opposite to this. So, now it is 10 comma 80, okay. cooperator gets 10, defector gets 80 fine and when two cooperators they interact repeatedly for 10 times then they get 50 comma 50 why because in one iteration they are getting 5 comma 5 so this is how we get these cells in this matrix game matrix okay but interesting facts are there when these players play with tit for tat okay so what will happen when a defector is meeting a tit for tat Okay, for 10 times. So, since defector is hardwired to play D, so he will keep on playing D, D, D for 10 times. Okay. This is 10 times, 10 periods, but this tit for tat, what he will do? This is your defector, but tit for that what it will do? I am writing T F T. So, it will start with C, it will start with C, okay. 
but as soon as this tft player who is hardwired to play this tft as soon as it sees that this other player who is hardwired to play defect he is playing d then he will quickly switch to d so now in subsequent period or in this in the next period he will play d and as we know that this defector is going to play d always in 10 times because he is hardwired to play defector so now this tft will also play d comma d okay so this is also 10 times so this is how the game will proceed and we know that when defector is interacting with the cooperator then defector is getting what 8 so this person will get 8 here and cooperator is getting 1 so tft will get 1 here so tft will get 1 here sorry but in the subsequent periods this is this was for the period number 1 that i am talking about so first period defector is getting 8 cooperator is getting 1 but in subsequent period what will happen when defector is interacting with the defector so this defector is get interacting with the other another defector so they are getting 3 comma 3 so this will also get 3 this will also get 3 here also 3 here also 3 and so on so what will be the payoff here the payoff will be for the defector kind of uh, player 8 in the first period plus 3 in 9 subsequent period okay so this will become 35 so this is how we can find out the uh, payoffs for defector player how about tft player that tit for tat player so one in the first period here okay plus 3 in subsequent 9 periods so it is 28 so we can see these numbers here so when a defector is interacting with tit for tat for 10 periods in a prisoner's dilemma setting then defector is getting 35 and tit for tat is getting 28 so this is how we have calculated the same thing okay same thing will happen here in this cell here what is happening again tit for tat is uh, interacting with defector okay so again tit for tat will get 28 just like here and defector will get 35 okay so this is how we are done with these many matrices uh, these many cells in this game matrix now what is remaining this this and this in the similar manner we can also do this so what will happen so for example here here what is happening a cooperator is interacting with the tit for tat so what will happen so since cooperator is hardwired to play cooperate always so in all the period the cooperator is going to play the cooperate uh, so what tit for tat will do tit for tat will also start with cooperate and since the cooperator is playing cooperate always so tit for tat will also uh, play cooperate always because it is hard hardwired it is not going to change okay so what we will get so we know from this game matrix that when cooperate interacts with another cooperator then they get 5 comma 5 and since it is happening for 10 periods so they are getting 50 comma 50 and both of them are getting 50 comma 50 same is the case in this cell here also a tit for tat is interacting with the cooperator so here also they will get 50 and 50 similarly we can easily see for this cell also where two tit for tat are interacting so since both of them are hardwired to play tit for tat both of them will start with c and they will keep on playing c for 10 players and similar in uh, similar to the previous case of cooperator versus tit for tat here also they will get 50 comma 50 because nobody is going to defect so both of these players who are hardwired to play tit for tat for 10 periods they will keep on playing cooperate and will get payoff of 5 in each period so 15 10 periods so this is how we saw this strategic form game for this 10 times or 10 period repeated prisoners dilemma game okay so <coughs> this is how we have modeled our situation of this repeated prisoners dilemma to get some idea about emergence of cooperation or evolution of cooperation okay so we will have a look of this uh, strategic form game that we have just formulated so here if we see carefully that there is no strategy that is strictly dominated okay so in the previous lectures especially in the beginning ones when we uh, 
recapitulated the uh, concepts in game theory, then we saw that what are strictly dominated uh, strategies, what are strictly dominant strategies. So, if we go back to that knowledge, then we can easily see that there is no strategy in this game that strictly that is strictly dominated. So, we can see defect is 30, 80, 35, then corporate is 10, 50, 50. So, we can easily see that none of them is strictly dominated or strictly dominant. Similarly, tit for tat 28, 50 and 50. Okay. You must get idea from those previous lectures. Okay. So, this is one uh, take away message from this game that right now we can analyze that no strategy is strictly dominated. Fine. If we move further and see then we can say that both cooperator and tit for tat are best responses to tit for tat. Okay. So, suppose we assume that player 2 is playing tit for tat. So, we are in this column. Okay. So, what is happening for player 1? Both of them are best response. So, we know over from previous knowledge what best responses are. So, playing cooperate and playing tit for tat is giving this player 1 higher payoff that is 50. So, we can say that this both cooperate and tit for tat these are best responses to tit for tat. Okay. Same is true for player 1. So, we can see here also suppose player 1 plays tit for tat then we can see for player 2 this cooperate is getting 50 and tit for tat also getting 50 this is the best response okay 50 and 50 so this is how we see that for uh, tit for tat both cooperate and tit for tat are the best responses okay then we can also see that for uh, any player the best response to defector is a defector. So, basically now suppose we see that now suppose if we see that player 1 suppose plays defect okay. then game is in this row this row then what is optimal for player 2 to play then player 2 should play this because defect is giving him 30 this is the highest here he is getting 10 if he is playing cooperate, here it is getting 28, if it is playing tit for tat. So, 30 is highest. So, what does that mean? The defect, defect is best response to defect. Okay. Similarly, we can see for the other player also. Another interesting fact in this strategic form game, we can see that this tit for tat weakly dominates cooperator. Okay. We always already saw that there is no strategy that is strictly dominated or which strictly dominates another strategy, okay. but this tit for tat weakly dominates cooperator. So, let us see with the perspective of say player 1. So, with the tit for tat this player 1 is getting 28, 50 and 50 and with cooperation, cooperation player 1 is getting 10, 50, 50. So, we can see this 50 50 are equal, 50, 50 are equal, but this 28 is more than 10. So, this is the definition of weekly domination. We can see this tit for tat weekly dominates cooperator. Okay, so, this was little exercise with, with this strategic form game. Now, we will come back to our objective that we started with. Our objective was to find out how this cooperation is getting evolved in this setting, where players are uh, players are uh, competing in this uh, setting of natural selection. Okay. For that we will employ the replicator dynamic that we did we have been using uh, we have been studying since previous two lectures. Okay. So, the same replicator, replicator dynamic we will apply here to see how different strategies evolve in this population. What population we, we are considering that there are three kind of strategies there in the gene pool. One is either players are cooperators okay, or they are defectors or they are tit for tat. I think is everything is clear that what cooperator defectors and tit for tats are. Okay. So, we will employ or apply this replicator dynamic in our model to see 
how different strategies you are evolving in this game. Okay. And we will also see whether a population is going to be dominated by the defectors or cooperators only. So, this is very socially relevant you know question I, I should say that we are going to analyze whether in such kind of population okay, which starts with certain mix of these strategies what are going to be the final mix there is going to be more cooperators or there is going to be more defectors. So, this is a, a idea also for the society also. So, what uh, is desirable in the society we want to see more and more cooperative people in the society. Okay. So, similar kind of thing we are going to see here whether in this uh, setting what will dominate either defectors or cooperators. Okay. So, to start with we will consider that there is a population mix okay, for generation T. We are talking about this generation T in this population where the population mix is as follows. So, this P T C okay, this is the proportion of cooperators in the population as the notation suggests. So, what I am saying this P T C. So, P is the proportion okay, T is the generation we are talking about generation T and C is the cooperator. Okay. So, this is how this notation goes. So, what I am saying this this P T C P superscript T and subscript C this is proportion of cooperators in the population. Okay. Similarly, P T T this is the proportion of tit for tat kind of players or the players that are endowed with uh, tit for tat strategy okay. their proportion is P T T again uh, small t uh, superscript and capital T subscript. Okay. So, small t is telling generation and capital T is the tit for tat endowed members. So, P T C is the proportion of cooperators to start with P T T is the proportion of tit for tat and P T D okay, D stands for defector. So, that is why this is proportion of defectors. Okay. Since, the total sum is 1. So, we can say that this P T D is equal to 1 minus P T C minus P T T. Okay. So, clearly we can say that this P T D is nothing but 1 minus P T C minus P T T okay. or we can write like this also 1 minus P T C plus P T T. So, 1 minus sum of proportions of cooperators and tit for tat that is P T D. Okay. So, this is how this proportion of defector is linked with proportion of cooperators and proportion of tit for tat. Okay. Fine. So, this is how uh, we describe this initial mix of population that we are considering in generation T and having done that what we will do? We will write average fitness for each type of strategy in this game. So, what we will do? We have all already done this when we applied this uh, replicator dynamics uh, dynamic to hog dove game. In the same manner, we will try to write average uh, fitness value for each of these strategies. So, we will start with the fitness of cooperator. Okay. So, suppose if we go back to our game and what is, is happening? So, when a cooperator is interacting with another cooperator here game is in this cell. So, he is getting 50 here. Okay. So, when a cooperator interacts with cooperator it gets 50 in this repeated prisoners dilemma and what will the probability of this cooperator getting interaction with uh, another cooperator? This will be equal to the fraction of proportion of the cooperators. So, here we have assumed here that P T C is the fraction of cooperators proportion of the cooperators. So, what we will do? So, the fitness of cooperator will be 50. This is what it is getting cooperator is getting when it is interacting with another cooperator and this will happen with a probability P T C since the proportion of cooperators is P T C. So, this P T C multiplied by 50 is fitness that this cooperator is getting when they interact with another cooperator. Okay. Plus what are the other option? 
So, a cooperator may interact with another cooperator, it may interact with another uh, defector and it may also interact another person, another uh, member of the population which has tit for tat as it is endowed strategy, okay. but all these three events will happen with some probability. As we saw in the case of cooperator, it is happening with this probability equal to the fraction or the proportion of the cooperators. Similarly, this cooperator can interact with a defector with this uh, probability, which is proportion of the defector. Okay. So, what will happen when a cooperator interacts with a defector, it gets, so see here, when a cooperator interacting with a defector, so cooperator is getting 10. So, this cooperator will get 10 okay, with probability p t d, which is the fraction of defector. Okay. We can also interpret in this uh, manner that these many times they will interact with another cooperator, this person the cooperator will interact with another cooperator. This will be the fraction of interactions when this cooperator interacts with a defector and this will be the fraction of interaction when this cooperator in interacts with another player with tit for tat or we can interpret as a probability, both are same. So, similarly, what will happen a cooperator interacts with another player with tit for tat. So, cooperator interacts with tit for tat, here we are and it gets both get 50. So, we are talking about cooperator, so it gets 50. So, this person is getting 50 with probability p t t or this is going to be this fraction of interactions. So, this is how we can write the average fitness of cooperator, which is nothing but the proportion of cooperator multiplied by the payoff or the fitness that it is getting while it is interacting with another cooperator plus the fraction of or the proportion of defectors multiplied by the payoff or fitness that they are getting when cooperators cooperator is interacting with the when cooperator is getting when it is interacting with defector plus the fraction or the proportion of the tit for tat kind of members of the population okay, multiplied by the payoff that cooperator is getting when it is interacting with tit for tat person. Okay. So, this is how we can write the average fitness of cooperator. Okay. So, we should remember this. I will mark these three equations as one, equation number one. Okay. Similarly, we can write average fitness for defector. Okay. So, here again in the same manner. So, with this proportion, this is the proportion of the interactions when this defector will be cooperator and how much defector gets when it interacts with cooperator, we can see from our game table. So, defector is getting 80 when it is interacting with a cooperator. So, this defector is getting 80 with this probability okay. plus how much it gets when it interacts with another defector it gets 30 from the previous table we can see defector defector it is getting 30. Okay. So, 30 it will get with probability p t d or this is the proportion of defectors. Okay. So, we can say this is the proportion of the interactions when a defector interacts with another defector and gets 30. So, this is how we can write it. Okay. Similarly, a defector interacts with tit for tat kind of uh, member, then it gets 35, we can see in this table. So, tit for tat defector, it is getting 35. Okay. So, 35 multiplied, multiplied by the proportion of the tit for tat kind of type of members, endowed members. Okay. So, this is how we can write the fitness of defectors. Okay. Similarly, we can write fitness for tit for, tit for tat kind of player. Okay. So, the proportion of cooperators will decide the fraction of interactions where this tit for tat uh, strategy is going to interact with a cooperator and they get 50. Okay, we can see here. So, tit for tat is getting 50 when it is interacting with the cooperator. Okay. So, 50 the payoff or fitness level multiplied by this fraction of cooperators. Plus, similarly, we can see tit for tat will get 28, we can see in the previous table. Okay, here like this. So, tit for tat is getting 28 with interacting with defector. 
Okay. So, this is how 28 multiplied by proportion of defectors in this population plus when two tit for tat players interact then they get 50 each multiplied by proportion of PTT that is proportion of tit for tat in this population. So, this is how we write this average fitness of each strategy in this population. Okay. I hope it is clear. So, you can practice see it how we are getting these equations from this uh, game table. Okay. We are trying to find out with the different uh, proportions of, of different kind of strategies in, the, in this population and multiplying that with the payoff they are getting from the interaction and this is how we are getting this fitness of a cooperator, fitness of a defector and fitness of a tit for tat player in this population. Okay. So, now we will proceed further and solve this. If we simplify this, we get this kind of equations. Okay. So, if we solve the previous equation and use the relationship that P T D is equal to 1 minus P T C minus P T T. Okay. This is what I described in the previous slide. So, this is the relation between proportion of defector okay, and proportion of cooperator and proportion of tit for tat. So, if we put this relationship in these equations, then what we get? We get these equations. Okay. So, now in terms of P T C and P T T, okay, we can represent the fitness of a cooperator, fitness of a defector and fitness of a tit for tat. Okay. Using this relation, this P T D is not there in these equations. So, we have represented the fitness of these three kind of strategies in terms of P T C that is proportion of cooperators in the population and P T T proportion of tit for tat players in this population. Okay. So, this is how we arrive at these equations and I will call these equations as equation number 2. Okay. So, what we will do? We have got this average fitness of all these three types of strategies. Our job is now to analyze which strategies will thrive more and which strategies will decline during the course of time. Okay. So, for that here in this situation we cannot proceed the way as we did in the previous case when we applied this replicator dynamic in the case of Hawk and Dove game. Okay. Since, there are three strategies. Okay. So, we cannot do in that manner. What we will do? We will resort to something called a phase diagram. So, we will try to draw a phase diagram okay, to find out what strategies will thrive okay, and how the population mix will alter or change during the course of time. Okay. The results are same as we did in the previous case. We are going to find out the similar things as we did in the case of when we applied replicator dynamic to the game of Hawk and Dove. There we did with the use of equations only. We did not use any uh, phase diagram in the previous lecture, but here it is very difficult to deal with this kind of equations as there are three strategies. So, we will use this a technique called phase diagram okay, and try to find out the similar things here. So, for that what we will try to do first? We will try to do that how is the situation when a tit for tat tit for tat interacts with say cooperator. Okay. So, what should happen? So, clearly we know uh, how we proceed that we can say that a tit for tat a tit for tat is more fit tit for tat is more fit when so when the tit for tat will be more fit when the fitness of tit for tat will be more than fitness of cooperator so what i mean to say is the tit for tat is more fit compared to compared to 
cooperators. So, when it will happen? It will happen when let me write fitness of tit for tat or I should say average fitness of tit for tat is greater than fitness of a cooperator. Okay. So, we can put this value, we know this fitness of tit for tat, fitness of tit for tat is here, we can see what is this, this is 28 plus 22 p t c from the previous equation, equation number 2 and how we got this equation number 2. So, we just put, we just use this relationship that p t d is equal to 1 minus p t c minus p t t. So, again to remind you how we got this equation set of equation set 2 from the equation set 1, just by utilizing the relationship between p t c, p t t and p t d as the total fraction sum should be equal to 1. Okay? So, nothing to confuse here, plus 22 p t t. So, this is how we can write it here from here. This should be greater than fitness of cooperator which is this. So, we can write this here 10 plus 40 p t c plus 40 p t t. Okay. So, if you solve this what you will get? So, if you solve this you will get p t c plus p t t should be less or equal to 1. So, this is the case when we say that if this condition is fulfilled then tit for tat is more fit compared to or then compared to a cooperator. Okay. So, if this condition is satisfied that is p t t plus p t c is less than 1, then the state for tat is more fit compared to a cooperator. Okay. So, we can simply use this information to draw a diagram. Suppose, we draw a diagram, diagram like this in the x axis suppose we say we take this p t t fraction of uh, tit for tat kind of players and here we say p t c fraction of uh, cooperators and then suppose here this p t c is 1 at this point and here on this axis it is 1. Okay. And if a line draw a line like this, okay. so this line is nothing but p t c plus p t t equal to 1. So, this condition says this thing should be less than 1. So, we are talking about this whole reason below this line. Okay. So, in this reason below this line tit for tat is more fit compared to cooperator. Okay. So, there is something else that this equation says. This says that p t c plus p t t is less than 1. That means, the sum of uh, proportion uh, sum of proportion of cooperators and proportion of tit for tat this should be less than 1. What does it mean? Okay. This means that there are some defectors there, there are some defectors present in the population. How? As we know that this is the relation between p t d and p t c p t t. So, this condition says that this sum is less than 1. That means, p t d is positive, p t d is positive. So, this implies that p t d is positive as we already know that p t c plus p t t plus p t d this is 1 from this relationship we already talked about. So, since we can with this relationship we can say that p t d is greater than 0 that means there is certain proportion positive proportion of defectors is there. Okay. Then only 
we have this condition fulfilled and then only tit for tat is fitter than this cooperators. So, here we saw that how this tit for tat is faring against this cooperator. Okay. So, when this condition is fulfilled then cooperator is less fit compared to tit for tat and then we saw that this implies that there is a certain proportion of these defectors are also there. Suppose this defector uh, per, uh, proportion is not there. So, suppose P T D is equal to 0 what does it mean? Then this condition becomes P T C plus P T T equal to 1. Okay. This means there are there are no defectors in the population. Okay. So, what does what does that mean in this uh, diagram? So, this means we are on this line as I already told this line is nothing but P T C plus P T T equal to 1. Okay. So, nothing to confuse here. So, I am just removing these lines to again explain you uh, again explain to you. So, here this is the axis this represents P T C okay. this point is 0 comma 0. Okay. What does this tell? This point 0 comma 0 tells that proportion of cooperators that is P T C and P T T are 0 here. So, at this point only defectors are there. Okay. This is how we are doing this and then I told you this line as this is 1. What does it mean? This point is 0 comma 1. This mean only cooperators are there and this point is 1 comma 0 only tit for tat are there at this point. Okay. And this line as I told you P T C plus P T T equal to 1 that means there are no defectors in the population. So, here all these points you take any point the sum of the proportions of cooperators and tit for tat is 1 along this whole line. Okay. And our first condition this says I am calling this equation number 3 as we have already done with equation set 1, equation set 2. Okay. So, this equation 3 tells that when tit for tat will be more fit compared to the cooperators. So, this is nothing but as I already told you this reason below this line the line P T C plus P T T equal to 1 below this line in this region the triangular region that I shaded here the tit for tat is more fit compared to cooperators and as we saw here what happens when this is equal to 1 that means the proportion are on this line. By the way in this diagram the phase diagram that I call what happens each point represents a proportion. Okay. Suppose this point is there that I may call for example, point number A. Okay. So, point A tells a proportion of these different strategies. So, suppose point A is let me call it 0 0.4, say 4, 0 0.5. What does it mean? It means that 0 0.4 is the proportion of P T T, this is proportion of proportion of P T T is 0 0.4, proportion of uh, tit for tat and this is P T C. Okay. And as the sum of all proportions, all three proportions is 1. So, this means at this point proportion of defectors is 0 0.1. So, this is how each point is telling about population mix here. So, this is how I told you what point A can be. This is just an example okay? just to explain it to you that I am considering this point A is 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So, P T T proportion of since we are taking P T T on x axis. So, first number tells the proportion of tit for tat 0 0.4. Second number we have taken second number tells y axis y coordinate. So, y axis we, we have taken proportion of C cooperators. So, 0 0.5 is the proportion of cooperators and the remaining 1 minus 0 0.4 minus 0 0.5 that is 0 0.1 which is the uh, proportion of defectors. So, this is how each point in this phase diagram that represents population mix. Okay. This is how I told you that this 0 comma 0 is a mix when all 
defectors are there, there is no tit for tat and no cooperator. Why? Because defectors proportion is 1 minus p t c minus p t t. So, 1 minus 0 minus 0 for this point origin. Okay? So, this is how I told you. So, clearly we saw this equation. So, when our po uh, population mix is below this line, inside this line in this shaded region that I drew, then tit for tat is better than cooperator or more fit is more fit than cooperator. But when our mix population mix is lying on this line that I drew that is p t c plus p t t equal to 1, then what is happening? Tit for tat and cooperator have equal fitness. Okay? I also told you that when tit for tat is more fit compared to cooperator in the region below this line, when it is happening? It is happening only when there are certain number of defectors are there, some proportion is there of the defectors. If there are no defectors, then we are on the line and then tit for tat has equal fitness compared to the cooperators. Okay? So, we will proceed further with the same kind of analysis, we will find out other uh, conditions for relative fitness of these three strategies and we will complete this phase diagram in the next class. So, thank you very much we will meet in the next lecture.